shared with my platoon. So when I was um when I was in AIT, Advanced Digital Training, um, I was because of my my PT score, they, they put me as what they call a student first sergeant. So I was in charge of the entire student body, like the, the whole company. And as a student first sergeant, it was my job to be in charge of the platoon sergeants and just make sure that everyone stayed unified. And so one of the first things I did was, um, I remember we were, we were standing in formation and everybody was like hating on each other. They literally just like, they were, they were like bad mouthing. Like we had people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds and, and, and just, and they were just quarreling. And I just, I remember just calling everyone to attention and I remember telling them, hey listen, like before I came to the army, before I joined and enlisted, I was a youth pastor, and I still have that same heart. I told them I still have a heart to shepherd people and to point people towards Christ, to point people towards God, and that hasn't changed. And so before I was even appointed this position, I told them I was praying for them already. And, you know, classic Luke, I started getting teary-eyed, whatever. <laughs> but it was real, and they appreciated that. And I was just communicating just God's love to them and, and the importance of what it means to be one unit, to, to, to have that, that one mindset. And I remember, so we have these things they call um, platoon planning time. And I remember having, having my particular, the particular platoon I was with. And, and, and I just remember, again, like people of different backgrounds, different personalities, they started, they started um, talking, and there was problems started to arise, and there was flame shifting going on. And I, just, I just got up, and again, I, I just, I opened this passage, this particular passage, and I. <laughs> this is crazy because again, not everyone's a Christian, obviously, but I just started reading this, and it's First Corinthians twelve. First Corinthians twelve, and, and it's talk about one body with many members. So I just want to share that real brief. I'm just going to start reading. And if you can just, just open up your ears for God's word. And may he just bless this time right now. It says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jew or Gentiles, slaves or free. And all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? Was that it? But, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. And there may be no division in the body, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members <coughs> may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping administration, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. 
So this passage is like, it's real simple. The main gist of what he's obviously deliberately trying to share, his emphasis is unity within the community. Unity within the body. And I remember reading this <laughs> to a whole bunch of people and, and just watching people. And I remember this one, one, one girl, uh, that I don't know, she just started crying. I was like, wow, I didn't even. It's because like, I think so, so often, we try to put ourselves in places we don't necessarily belong. Or vice versa, we try to get out of places where God knows we belong. And the thought there, the thought that I think Paul is trying to emphasize here, in verses 12 and 13 alone, you read the word body like 18 times through that passage. And in just 12 and 13 alone, five times, it talks about this, this one word, one. And so the emphasis here is pretty deliberate, and it's obvious. And the reason he's writing this is for the reason of oneness, the reason of unity, the reason of being together, the fact that we've been placed in this body for a specific reason. We've been placed and we've all experienced this beautiful thing which is baptism in the spirit and the, and, the, and the salvation that we experience because of Christ. And then we have, in verses 14 through 20, we understand the importance of the body and, hmm. and, and your importance in your role in the body. And then in verses 21 through 26, we see that you need every part of the body. That you can't say, I don't need you, or you don't need me, or, and you need every person here. And in verse 27 to 31, you can see the diversity in the body and how it all comes together. And so, again, we're leaving in a couple days, so one day. <laughs> but what I see, you know, the beauty that I see in this church is honestly how everything works together and how everything has constantly been working together. And it's all for God's glory. Like, you have to imagine the beauty of the tapestry that God is making through us. I mean, each one of us is like, piece in a jigsaw puzzle of what he's making in this body of Christ. And you can't force pieces to, to, to kind of like fit in a place that doesn't belong. Otherwise, like, the picture gets all messed up, and the next thing you know, it's not the picture that God had intended. And so it's important for us to understand your role, understand what God is teaching you, and understand your, your part in this beautiful tapestry that God is making. And so, I honestly imagine something totally different tonight. I imagine sitting in a circle and all of us kind of just going back and forth like Bible study. But this was, this was so amazing, just to hear just your appreciation for the ministry of my family and my wife, and, and to be able to be encouraged by that. And to think, man, I'm, I'm excited to see what what God is going to do with the people within this church and it, constantly just keep encouraging each other in that way and keep encouraging pastor in that way even though he sells you out sometimes <laughs> man, I was like ooh, ooh. he's like oh, we should keep going <laughs> not like God, God's going to do wonderful things and so keep that unity keep that spirit and just keep praying for one another. And remember, it's not about you. You know, that's the, that's the thing you gotta keep remembering. It's not about you. Don't make it about yourself. But make it always point to His glory. Amen. So that's all I have to share. I'm gonna pray. Dear God, most gracious Heavenly Father, again, we come before you, and we're just humbled by the fact that you allow us to be part of this body. You allow us to experience your love, to experience your grace, and to experience your goodness to us by keeping us together and keeping us unified. We thank you, Lord, that, that we can experience this type of fellowship and we can experience, Lord, uh, just the relationship we have with you through one another. So I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to work 
continue to work in us, through us, and use us for your, I guess, for, for your glory, Lord. Use us to herald your name and to make your name famous. And so I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you for all the people that are here tonight. And I just pray, Lord, you may continue to use them to bless them as you have blessed me with the relationships I have with them. May you alone get all honor, glory, and praise. And all these I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.